What is going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about Amazon's earnings, taking a look at some numbers they reported, taking a look at the stock, seeing how it reacted to their earnings report, as well as taking a look at some other stocks, ETFs that I personally see potential in, and that you guys have been messaging me on Discord and on Instagram. Instagram. So if you guys find value in these videos, if you enjoy the content, feel free to smash that like button. Let's get this video to 50 likes. It really does help the channel grow. And I do appreciate all you guys out there for watching the content, subscribing to the channel, and of course, smashing that like button. So let's talk about what happened today, guys, in the overall market. We can see here the SPX, the S&P 500, the 500 largest traded U.S. companies was up around point. 0.86% today, up around $23.05. The Dow Jones was actually down today, down $15 at the close, down around 0.06%. And the NASDAQ composite, guys, we can see these are the futures. They're currently down around 0.35%, down around $24. But today was actually a pretty nice performing day for the NASDAQ overall, right, guys? We can see at 9 30 a.m today we were at around sixty eight hundred and fifty dollars in terms of the nasdaq we spiked all the way up to 69.40 around a 100 point move about at noon eastern standard time in terms of the nasdaq we ended up closing the day right around here at around 69.30. So overall, guys, today the NASDAQ was up around 90 points. Solid, solid day in terms of the NASDAQ. So, you know, another solid uptrending day today for the SPX, the S&P 500. We saw Facebook reported earnings yesterday. The stock absolutely went ballistic. It went up $12 after market hours, and it actually carried into today as well. The stock actually almost hit around $170 and of course Facebook is one of the biggest companies out there this has a large weight on the SPX, the S&P 500, and a lot of other companies as well, just like Facebook, did very well today, pushing up the entire index a significant, not really a significant, but a solid, solid amount, heading into Amazon's earnings, which was, you know, one of the most expected earnings of this week, which we finally got today, and of course, we're going to be talking about that in a couple of minutes, but in terms of the pattern here on the SPX, guys, you know, like I said in yesterday's video, we're trending out of the 180 SMA with all of these companies. Well, not all, but a lot of the big name companies out there doing very well over the past couple of days. You know, we saw Apple did very well. Of course, we saw Facebook. We just talked about that. And those two have very big weights and, of course, influence on the entire market. So we ended up breaking out of the 180 SMA, which has been a resistance over the past couple of months as we can see from these previous three rejections in October, November, and of course in December right before that big bloody month that we did have and the fact that we broke out of it guys you know, the earnings season hasn't been too bad, although growth has been slowing down. You know, it's a pretty solid sign on a technical perspective, right, guys? We can see on the 20-day, one hour, you know, a couple of days ago, we thought this was a double-top bearish formation. We ended up bouncing nicely on the 50 SMA about on the 30th, which was yesterday, guys. We have these two days of consolidation. Ended up breaking that 26.75 resistance and we're continuing the uptrending pattern. So if I can just, uh, you know, clearly, uh, quickly rather clear this drawing set, we can see on a nice new um, trend line here that it's still holding that trend, right? It's very obvious that the SPX, since the 24th, 25th, 26th of December, has been recovering and doing very well. And honestly, fun fact, guys, you know, the markets are up. And I actually read an article, uh, I think it was today, that this is one of the best months in the S&P 500 in a couple of years. It might be the best month since... Um, 
2015, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but I do believe it it might have been 2015 if I'm remembering correctly. And if we can see, you know, if we see this 90-day chart very quickly, we can see, you know, from the bottom here over the past couple of months, guys, we're up nearly 13 or we are up nearly 14% in terms of the SPX. So we have been getting a nice recovery bounce over the past couple of months and it's actually putting us into the overbought territory which we have been in over the past couple of uh i would say about a week or so now a week 10 days so you know a pullback i'm not uh you know i'm not expecting one over the next couple of days but i wouldn't be surprised if we did end up pulling back a little bit after this earnings week is over guys we saw a lot of these stocks like i said they flew up and you know if we do see some profit taking since they are a bit overbought now um you know i wouldn't really be surprised thus moving down the market wouldn't be too crazy uh you know too crazy out of the reach right now moving the market down in my personal opinion so the dow jones guys same exact thing as the, as the spx we're out of the 180 sma resistance that we've been under over the past couple of weeks right finally out of that resistance and on the 20 day one hour chart same thing as the spx guys we're making higher highs higher lows we almost had a uh, you know double top bearish formation here we slightly broke out of it making it a higher high we pulled down started trading horizontally in this pattern here from around 24,700 to down to around 24,300 and then of course guys we saw some of the dow 30 companies over the past couple of days do very well including j and J, which is actually a stock that I called out a couple of days ago. This one actually has been doing very well over the past couple of days. And then we saw the nice pop up, the higher high, the break out of that resistance and the continuation of that uptrending pattern. So the NASDAQ today, guys, broke out of that resistance at around 68.25 that we've been talking about. And it's finally, finally continuing the uptrending pattern, pushing to that higher high. So let me quickly clear this drawing set guys to give you a better idea here so we were talking about the nasdaq support at around 60 uh 66 25 and the resistance at around 68 25 so this 200 point uh you know fluctuation zone right here is where it was trading from the 18th really all the way up to today right we can see this is when we ended up breaking out and we finally hit around 6,900 right near that 7,000 point in terms of the NASDAQ. So the fact that we broke out of this horizontal channel, guys, good sign that we are continuing the uptrend, continuing to push up in terms of the NASDAQ. But keep an eye on... On this strong resistance at around $7,100 here. And of course, guys, another one at around $6,900 right where we are right now in terms of the NASDAQ. Keep an eye on those levels. If we do end up holding this support here or this old resistance as a new support, we might be trading in this channel next. So keep an eye on that, guys. And let's talk about Amazon's earnings very quickly before we do talk about should you trade every single day, right? And I talked about this a couple of weeks, months ago in another video, but remember guys, we get new subscribers, new traders on this channel every single day. So I figured I'd talk about whether or not you should trade every day because I personally did not trade today. I did not trade today. And we'll get into that in a couple of minutes, but let me pull up my phone very quickly so we can talk about some quick key numbers in terms of Amazon's earnings. I'm sure a lot of you guys already saw what they reported, but in terms of those that didn't, let me just quickly give you the rundown very quickly right now. So earnings per share, Amazon reported $6.04 of earnings per share versus $5.68 expected. So they beat on earnings very nicely, no problem there. I believe they had a record holiday season, guys. So that's a pretty good sign that consumers are still buying up products, pushing up that EPS, pushing up, um, you know, the revenue, the net income, and everything to a record sales holiday season for Amazon. Solid, solid thing there. So their revenue, $72.4 billion versus $71.9 billion expected. So we beat on revenue as well. So EPS and revenue beat for Amazon. Another key component, the web services business, $7.43 billion versus $7.3 billion. 
million dollars expected. This was a 45% growth year over year. So again, very, very nice growth out of the web services uh, business segment. And of course, a beat on their revenue is a very, very nice sign. So we actually saw a 19.7% jump in revenue, which was faster than the 18.8% that was expected. So we saw solid, solid numbers in terms of Amazon. And you might be asking yourself, you know, why did Amazon stock go down, you know, after they reported these earnings. It seems like pretty good earnings, you know, record holiday sales, they beat on EPS, they beat on revenue, but the stock ended up closing at around 1718 and now we're trending all the way down to 1630, which is around a 5% drop from where it ended up closing. So you might be asking yourself, you know, why did this happen? So let's talk about this guys very briefly. We saw that their first quarter revenue guidance actually fell short to what analysts expected, guys. And understand that guidance is, you know, often a huge catalyst to whether or not a stock is going to push up or down in the short term. We can see here, guys, you know, a perfect example of this, right? We saw... Um, you know, AMD, Advanced Micro Devices, their guidance for their sales in 2019 was very good, right? They were expecting sales, huge sales growth in the year of 2019. And you can see exactly what ended up happening to that stock, right? That stock's been up like 30% over the past couple of days. Absolutely crazy, right? But we can see Amazon, right? Their first quarter revenue guidance fell short of expectations coming between 56 to $60 billion below the 60.8 expected. So they fell short of that. Investors clearly did not like that, which is why the stock, in my personal opinion, is selling off here after market hours. So it's very important, guys, you know, guidance, in my opinion, although a lot of people don't think it's, um, you know, too important on a quarterly basis because they have, you know, longer visions, longer term visions on companies. A lot of, the, you know, investors out there, they do count on guidance for the upcoming quarter. I myself do give it some attention, of course, although I am a longer term investor in terms of three, five, you know, 10 years out. But, you know, a lot of people out there, they don't like guidance that's weak for the next coming quarter or for the year, right? Sending stocks down in a lot of situations. So that is what ended up happening with Amazon's earnings. They did pretty well, record holiday sales, but the stock did not like the fact that you know, the guidance is is pretty weak, guys, for the next coming months. So that's pretty much the gist of Amazon's earnings and how the stock ended up reacting to these earnings. So let's talk about very quickly, guys, should you trade every single day? I know I've covered this topic, like I said, but remember, we do get a lot of new viewers and subscribers on this channel every single day. So I kind of want to keep you guys in the loop for the beginners out there. So I personally did not trade today and I'm a huge advocate of not forcing yourself to trade every single day. I like to see personally, I like to see setups that I typically trade start to form before entering a position, right? This is what I call waiting for the opportunity to open up to me, right? And simply why I didn't trade today is because I didn't see any opportunities open up to me, to my liking, to my personal strategy, to the setups that I personally like to trade. I didn't see any today, and I figured keeping the cash on the sidelines is the better move rather than putting that money into a stock ETF that I don't really like the setup where I could potentially lose money, right? That's the gist of why I didn't trade today. And I see this a lot with beginners and I was definitely like this when I first started trading where I felt like I had to trade every single day to fulfill, just to fulfill the craving of trading, right? When I first started out, and I'm sure you guys are experiencing this when you're first starting out, it was like a drug in a sense, right? I love trading. Even if the setup wasn't good, I still threw my money in and I traded, right? And this is not the way to go if you want to be consistent and if you want to last long in this trading game, guys. The way to go is to make small, consistent wins when opportunities open up to you, when the setups that you personally like to trade open up to you that fit your personal strategy when you don't see these opportunities 
simply don't trade because if you force a trade, you'll end up losing money and you'll get discouraged most of the time, right guys? Because if you see a setup that's not really of your liking, not really fitting your strategy and you just want to trade that day, you're like, screw it. I'm going to trade today. I'm going to throw my money in this and you end up losing five, six percent. If you don't set a stop loss, let's say you lose 10 percent, you know, this could be very discouraging and this could end up uh, you know, happening to you and you'll lose a lot of your account. You'll get discouraged. You won't want to trade anymore, or it would have just put you in a downward spiral of continuing making, you know, continuously making those bad mistakes, guys. So should you trade every day? You know, absolutely not. If there's no setup opportunity open up, to, opening up to you that you think you can make money on, right? So the answer is no, guys. You should not trade every day. Sometimes trading, you know, not trading rather. Sometimes not trading, staying on the cash is the better option. So that's just the answer to that, guys, and why I personally did not trade today. I did not see any opportunities. And now let's just talk about very quickly. I only have a couple of minutes left here, um, you know, about some ticker symbols that you guys have been requesting and that I personally see potential in. Uh, starting off here with Facebook, guys. So we saw, you know, Facebook, you know, obviously went up $12 per share from their earnings report yesterday. And I was honestly expecting a slight fall in terms of Facebook stock today. And we can closely see that that is what we're seeing. We're seeing a downtrend pattern slowly starting to form at the close of the market today. So if we're judging on the 180 chart here, guys, on the four hour chart, this could be a potential short term put option play. You can even short Facebook if you do see an opportunity for it falling down to maybe the low 160s, a little bit lower from where it is right now because it does seem extremely overbought on this 184 hour chart RSI. This could be a potential pullback, right? I was talking about this earlier on in the group chat. Some other guys were talking about it as well that, you know, we do see potential for Facebook to pull back due to this drastic spike up. And of course, short-term traders are probably going to start, you know, taking their profit. Short-term money that maybe got in right around the 130, 120, 140 range might start funneling out of Facebook stock, pushing it back down to a, you know, a reasonable level in the RSI back down to a little bit more of an oversold territory. So in terms of Facebook stock guys, you know, I personally think it is going to pull back a little bit. You know, if it does end up pulling back a little bit to the 160s, this could be a good entry point for a potential swing back up to the upside if we slowly if we slowly do start finding a support and slowly do start to curl back up. But as of right now, it does seem a bit overbought. So I've been getting a lot of questions on AMD as well. We talk about this and this is very similar to Facebook guys. This stock is up literally like 20-30% over the past couple of days and the fact that we did get rejected by this resistance here that I have drawn out at around what is this like $25 and we're pulling back that's a very very good sign. So in terms of AMD keep an eye on this next resistance old resistance that's now a support at around $20. $23.75, $24. This could be a good uh, support level for AMD where we could potentially hop in for a day trade or a couple day swing trade. So keep an eye, guys. If we do end up selling off, the RSI is going to come down a bit, opening up a solid buying opportunity in terms of AMD as a swing trade, in my personal opinion. So another one I want to talk about. We obviously take the, uh, took a look at Amazon was J&J. &J. I shouted this one out a couple of days ago. Shout out to anybody that did end up trading this, you know, it did very well from the time that I did end up shouting it out, right? Do you guys remember I was talking about this horizontal pattern here from around 126 up to around 131? We were talking about it here at the consolidation at around 128 to 129. And from there, it ended up closing the gap, right? And we broke out of that resistance at around 131, now making it a new potential support. So if we do end up pulling back, guys, 
to around 131, 132. This could be a potential entry point as a swing trade for J and J Johnson and Johnson. It does look pretty solid in my personal opinion. So another one I want to talk about before I do end off this video is J Nug, and this is another one that we've been talking about and calling out in the group chat as well as in these videos over the past couple of days. And for those of you guys that don't know. JNUG is an inverse ETF. It's a gold futures based ETF, meaning whenever the gold futures are going up, JNUG is going up in price as well. So we talked about how, you know, JNUG broke this resistance at around $1,300 or gold rather broke the resistance and it was holding it as a new support level. And this was a good sign for potential long position in JNUG. We can see guys, it held the support nicely. It popped up and it's been continuously uptrending over the past couple of days we're in the 1320 level right now in terms of gold it does seem a bit overbought right now so if we do experience a pullback this could be a good entry point for JDST and of course the beauty of these ETFs guys you can play JDST on the gold pullback if we do end up getting one and then once we do find a support and slowly start to reverse back up slowly start to uptrend back up in terms of the gold futures maybe around 1315 that could be a good opportunity to hop into JNUG which of course is the inverse to JDST for a potential long play so those are just a couple of stocks different scenarios that I'm personally waiting for and watching for this week so if you guys enjoy this video feel free to smash that like button leave a comment and subscribe follow me on Instagram and Twitter and join our discord group chat as well as our Facebook group all of those are linked down below in the description box. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate you all. Peace out.